Hey everybody, welcome to Laps Comic Fan. I'm Steve, and today I'm talking 1996 Generation X, a nightmare of things to come. Just a reminder, we are having a giveaway for when we hit 200 subs. So share the video, share the channel if you like it. We would really appreciate that. So the drawing will be random like we did last time. We'll do a live stream when we hit 200 subs. We'll probably give you guys a week's uh, notice ahead of time. So you can know when the stream will happen if you would like to watch live. And you could afterwards, if you are picked, then get a hold of me email at thelapsecomicfan at gmail.com and we'll send that out to you as soon as possible. All right, so Generation X, A Nightmare of Things to Come. It's really, really cool. I like it, it's a Halloween themed book. Uh, the writers are Scott Lobdell, I think that's how you say his name, Michael Wright, and the artist is the awesome Chris Bocello, who really, really brings out this book. It's a, it's a lighthearted story with some dark undertones, but the art is where it's at here, people. It is incredible. So Franklin, Richards, Leach, and Artie are out and their mission is to get some candy. They're the young kids of the Generation X, the newest mutants that were there, and they're being watched over by Husk and Banshee. And Husk has a little bit of trepidation with them going out and kind of mingling with the humans because of the way the humans are. And Husk is a little bit overprotective, but Banshee is like, listen, this is the only time of year they get to do this. It's the only time of year they get to fit in and we should just let them go. So there's two sides to this story. There's the Husk, uh, Banshee, and the kids side. And then there is the Emma Frost and Nightmare side, which is setting up the larger story overall that is to come later. So we cut to the Xavier School of Gifted Children and some jerks decide that they want to egg the house. These are just jerks, you know what I mean? But they're in for the surprise of their life for when they get in there they see a skeleton that is on fire and they look over to a tree and there's a hanging person and it's alive and it's just they just get scared half to death when they try to make their way out all of a sudden the truck is lifted up and thrown out of there <laughs> and it's pretty awesome but the mutants that stop this egging are chamber monet saint croix known as m jubilee and skin and as that's happening, we see Emma Frost, kind of a projection of herself. She's like, hmm, I should have stopped this, but you know what? I'm just glad that the team is back together. So it, that plays on stuff that happened earlier in earlier issues. So as Emma is walking back into her room, Nightmare appears in the corner and she sees him and he is surprised and she's just like, you know, why don't you come down from there and ask me whatever the hell you want to ask. We cut back to the kids having fun at Halloween and that's where Banshee tells Husk, you know, about let them be this is the only time they get to fit in plus franklin had just lost his whole family in the onslaught saga so he's trying to just be as normal as possible husk talks to banshee about do you regret not being able to be there to see your daughter grow up and he he exclaims yeah he does but he does like to hang out with the kids and i think that's how he's repaying or trying to replace not being there for his daughter we cut back to Emma Frost and Nightmare, and it seems that Nightmare has been banished from his Nightmare realm. And he says that she has taken it over. Emma doesn't believe him, and he says, yes, look, look and see. And she uses her psychic powers to look into the Nightmare realm, see her, and we don't know who the her is yet, or even if he's telling the truth. Nightmare tells her that this is not something to take lightly, because if this person takes over the nightmare realm there can be irreparable damage and it's not to be ruled by a mad woman so then emma just gets naked and goes to bed snaps her fingers and turns the lights off we have a nice heart to heart with husk and franklin who says franklin says he misses his dad and his mom and stuff like that and husk says you know my dad left but we can always have them in our heart and if you do you have them in your heart you're never alone they hug and all while this is going on, there's some really cool art at the bottom of the pages, like these weird looking goblin-y people doing crazy stuff like burning people alive or like fighting and all this shit. It's pretty crazy. So Emma's trying to sleep 
and she snaps her fingers back and Nightmare's there and she accuses Nightmare of keeping her from sleeping and he's like, no, it's not me, it's her. And Emma tries to say, you know, I don't believe you. I know no one took over your dimension. You're just looking for a way out. You're trying to get me to show you that way in reverse. Nightmare says, that's not true. And she asks, well, how did you get out? He says, uh, I escaped. Emma catches him and is like, haha, if you escape, then you must know a way back in. And Nightmare tells her, but what if she does try to sneak in? So something is really messing with him. We don't quite know the full story, and I'm going to review some more of these so we get to the bottom of this. He said, I just had to make sure there was no way and that she couldn't use Emma to do so. Emma tells him that there... Well, looking into the nightmare realm and dreams is one thing. Getting a corporeal form into it is something that she can't do. And she says, I promise. Snaps her fingers. He's out. The kids had a great time trick-or-treating and they thank Banshee and Husk. And Artie gives a special thanks to Banshee and projects his daughter. And he's like, wow, that, that's probably what she looked like when she was your age. And he says, thank you. We see the bottom of the page and those goblins ask, are they gone yet? He says, yeah, don't come back. So I don't really know what's going on with them or what they're doing, but it's rather interesting and I'd like, I'd want to know more. So we get one of the coolest splash pages in the comic. It's Nightmare. It looks like he's kind of in his realm. It looks like a dream and I'm assuming it is. And he's saying stuff like, Emma, it's not your dream. It's not Xavier's dream. It's your dream. But it's about to be torn and ripped apart and destroyed. And just it's just these awesome images of doing his nightmare thing. Can you taste it, Emma? <sighs> you know, all that crazy stuff. Emma snaps out of her nightmare, wakes up, looks up, and is like, dude, I thought you said that you, you were mean you were done. Like, what is this? You, you invade my nightmare? He's like, no, I did this to thank you. She's like, by giving me a nightmare. He's like, no. This was not a nightmare. This was a taste of things to come very soon. And that's how it ends, guys. Um, I'm going to do more of the Generation X. This is a whole run. This was uh, issue number 22. I believe it started in 1994. Uh, but this is a definite recommendation. It's very easy to read. It, it's a lot of fun. There's some wholesome storytelling but there's also some underlying craziness to it because nightmare is a cool character if done well he can also suck if not done well it's almost like mephisto like mephisto to me I, I, i've very rarely seen anything with mephisto that's good but whenever he is done well it's it's really really cool and i i like dr strange comics except for like some of the older ones where he's like, by the sheath of the gods and all that dumb shit that he says. Uh, I think the mutants are always some of my favorite characters and I relate to the storylines. I relate to the depression. I relate to those things because I've dealt with that type of stuff in my life. But the, the art in this, man, Bacello is awesome. It's just so unique. Everything is so unique and Especially, like I said, especially for being Halloween, it's just done so well and it fits perfectly. And the writers did a good job writing this little story. I'm going to continue on reading. I'll probably review like three or four uh, the next time I do just so we can finish up this storyline and see where it leads to. So next on the Laps Comic Fan, I'm going to have you guys vote. I'll put this in the description so you can vote in the comments. I will also put something up on Instagram and you can vote in those comments. We're going to go from uh, Detective Comics, May of 1990, number 614, Batman. Wildcats Trilogy, number one from 1993, I believe. I believe this is 1993. I could be wrong, but I believe it is. From 1996, Impulse, annual number one. Here's a big one, uh, Uncanny X-Men, Marvel 600. A 
another Detective Comics from 91, uh, Armageddon 2001. And Ultimate Iron Man number two. I'll post a picture of those. You guys can vote on whichever one you want me to review. That'll be next Thursday. And uh, that's Thanksgiving, y'all. So I might have something special. So maybe we'll do it two weeks from today because I do have something planned for uh, Thanksgiving. So we'll, we'll do that. These comics that uh, you vote on, that'll be for two weeks from today. The review will be done. All right, guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll be here on Saturday with John for the PCP Roundup. Peace.